Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Fading Signal here again. I'm just gonna try to do a quick 10 minute video to show you how to make your own custom weather patch. Uh, typically when a mod makes changes to the weather, such as Supreme Storms or a Supreme and Volumetric Fog, or even Realistic Nights, usually it's just a couple of settings that are changed within the weather record that make a huge dramatic difference in game. Um, the benefit of this is that it's extremely easy to make a patch. Uh, the reason this has come up as a topic uh, for a video is that a lot of people are requesting patches for my recent True Storms mod, uh, and I've provided patches for the most popular mods like Pure Weathers, Climates Tamriel, Arceran, etc. But there are still a number of users that are asking for kind of, you know, patches for maybe some more obscure mods, um, or maybe there's some other uh, mods that'll be coming out uh, in the future that'll be editing weather, and you might want to make a patch from. The plus side of me teaching you this is that if you've got I don't know, 10 different storm mods installed, you'll be able to make your own patch and pick and choose and cherry pick all of the different things about each mod that you like into your own weather plugin. Uh, this is a really powerful thing to, to learn to take control of your weather. Pretty much make it do whatever you want. Um, I do this with my, uh, with my weather setup. I have a, a weather plugin that I have lower in my load order that I kind of treat like a bashed patch, even though it's, you know, controlled and added to manually. It's sort of my master plugin that loads last, that is a culmination of all these different mods. So today I'm going to show you how to make a patch for my True Storms mod combined with Realistic Nights, combined with Supreme Storms, uh, all into a single uh, patch plugin. So let's get started. As usual, you will want to right click and select none. Now quick note, if you're unfamiliar with TES 5 Edit, I strongly suggest watching one of my previous videos that gives you an intro into how to use TES 5 Edit. I'm not going to cover any of that, I'm just going to dive right into making the plugin in here. So we'll select none, we want to select only the plugins that we're going to edit. So let's use this handy little search box and look for True Storms. Let's pick Realistic Nights and Supreme Storms. Ah, thankfully they're all at the end of my load order right now. Okay, let's hit OK. Wait for this guy to load. Okay. Now, first thing that you want to do when you are installing a new weather mod and you want to see if it conflicts with any, anything that you already uh, have currently installed, first thing you want to do after loading into TES 5 Edit is just expand the plugin and take a look at what it's doing. Let's go ahead and look. All right, True Storms, we've got weather, shader, sound descriptors. We expand these. If you're familiar with at all with TES 5 Edit, you'll know that anything that's being overwritten is going to turn red or pink or in this case, orange and pink. Um, these different colors mean different things. I won't go too far into that. But in general, areas that are green and yellow like this mean that they're good to go. Um, there are things being overwritten, but nothing's being removed. Um, the ones in red are the big ones that you're gonna wanna take a look at. So um, so we know here, we know this sort of basic structure of, of true storms has sounds, shader, particle, geometry, and weather. Let's look at realistic nights. Right, Realistic Nights has a lot more changes. It's got image space adapters, image spaces. These also control the colors. It's got changes to lights. It's got some magic effect changes, some spell changes, and, and it changes all of the weathers in the vanilla game to make all of the nights darker. So, um, you know, we know a little bit more about this. So taking a quick look, we can see here that if, if something's green and yellow like this, that typically means that the mod is making a change to the vanilla uh, Skyrim.esm and is not conflicting with something else that's loaded in your current uh, in your current TES 5 edit session. When it's red like this though, that means that it's, it's conflicting with something else in the load order aside from the main Skyrim ESM. So if we go down and look at that and click on Skyrim Overcast Rain, we can see here and let's right click and do no conflict rows to only see the rows that are conflicting with each other. So you can see here that Realistic Nights drops all these color numbers way, way down whereas True Storms keeps them at the same vanilla level. So, okay, that's, you know, conflict number one, if we look around. The other conflict here is that True Storms is adding sounds that are not present in Realistic Nights. So how would we get these colors and these sounds into a single plugin? We'll cover that in just a second. Let's look a little bit more into some of the other things that need to be, uh, need to be adjusted. So, again, looking at all of these image spaces and all these other items, Nothing here needs to be changed because these uh, Supreme Storms and True Storms are not overriding any of this information. This is all just stuff that's overriding the base Skyrim game and we can leave that alone. So let's close these, close out the lights, close spells. 
So what we're really looking at, the only thing we need to really focus on, at least for realistic nights, is just the weathers. And at that, only the weathers that are being affected by my mod, which are the ones that are in red. As you can see here, Skyrim, Supreme Storms, Realistic Nights, and True Storms all edit the same one. So let's close this up real quick. Let's take a quick look at Supreme Storms. So we've got Supreme Storms and True Storms. Let's expand Shader Particle Geometry. That's turning red as well. Let's take a look at that. All right, Supreme Storms and True Storms. So my mod overwrites Supreme Storms. Now, um, if you prefer to have Supreme Storms a uh, specific type of sh uh, rain texture and shader changes you can uh, you can put that into the into your patch or you can use mine now again the, the only things you need to put into the patch are the things that you want to retain so if you're okay with true storms overriding supreme storms rain you can just leave this as is so let's go ahead and and, and start and the thing that I like to do when making patches is start by making override records of the most complicated type of record. And what I mean by that is if we go and look in the weather for realistic nights, let's click on Skyrim Overcast Rain. So in this case, there's a lot of numbers here uh, that are being changed. I mean, it's not a ton, but it, but more than, you know, more than the shader changes. So I like to start off with making a, an override copy of the base record of what I know I want to keep. So in this case, I know I want realistic nights. I want I want my nights to be dark. So let's select all of the records that have conflicts, right? So all of the red ones. Click, click. Click it, click it, click. Okay, right click. Select copy as override into. Again, we want to make sure it's override, not new record. Click yes, I'm absolutely sure. We want to select a new file. Let's go ahead and call this uh, I like my naming convention for patches that I make custom. I like to start off with TES5 patch. That's just my own personal thing, so at a glance I can easily identify what they are. Let's say dash uh, weather master patch. Now this is always going to be your master plugin that in the future, uh, and maybe I'll cover that as well, you want to add some additional changes to it. This is always going to be the plugin. So this is going to be your kind of your end all be all. Let's go ahead and click OK. It's going to ask us to add the masters. We'll hit yes. So now let's go ahead and go back. Let's click on Skyrim Overcast Rain. All right, as you can see, we've got Skyrim, Realistic Nights, True Storms, and now our patch. Our patch has the changes from Realistic Nights, so that's good to go. Uh, it does not have my changes for the storms. Uh, for the sounds and the lighting for the for the lightning. So as in usual fashion, we just click and drag them over. You can drag each one one by one, but that's sort of tedious. You can click and drag the main uh, the main header for that record row here. Now it's going to ask you to add this as a master. I say yes. When you have a master patch plugin like this, it's going to be a lot like a bash patch and that you're going to have a ton of masters added to it and that's totally fine because we can treat this as sort of a disposable plugin. So now if we look we've got not only the Realistic Nights colors but we've also got my sounds merged in. So that one's done. If we go to Storm Rain this one's going to be a little more tricky because we're trying to combine three mods into one patch but that's again very simple. All we need to do is keep an eye on the records that are red for the most part. So in this case Realistic Nights, that's still got the correct colors, but if we see here the visual effect that comes with Supreme Storms, which is one of the main changes that it makes, is being removed. So to get that into our patch, we just click and drag and let go. Fog Distance, we want the fog distance from Supreme Storms. Drag that into our patch. Wind Speed, Wind Data, the Transition, etc. Sure, let's drag all that into there. But oh, if you notice, because we dragged from here, it did not copy my lightning color changes. If you don't want those, that's fine, but if you do, all you gotta do is drag that over. And then thunder and lightning frequency, I like to keep that in because the way I do sounds, if this is a lower number, the sounds trigger way too often and it gets to be overwhelming. So as you can see, just now we combined Realistic Nights, Supreme Storms, and aspects of my mod into a single plugin here. So let's go ahead and do the sounds now. Let's just drag this to the right. Scroll down to make sure there's not any more changes. Nope, we're all good. Nice and simple. Let's go ahead and do that for the snow. 
So realistic nights and supreme storms. I don't make any changes to these, but because we're treating this as a master patch that contains all of the changes that we want from, in theory, all of our mods, I'm going to go ahead and just do all of them. So let's do that. Uh, we want, so the colors we want to leave with realistic nights. Those are fine. We want the fog distance. We want the wind and precipitation changes. That's good. Let's do this for overcast rain. Go ahead and keep my lightning color and my sounds. Oops. See, I accidentally dragged one. We want to drag the whole thing. Double check it's good. Do the same thing here and here. Nice and simple. Storm rain. Again, we've got multiple mods conflicting. So we want to go ahead and drag over the visual effect, the fog, the wind speed data, the uh, lightning frequency and colors from my mod, and then the sounds from my mod. Drag the data, drag the sounds, double check, make sure everything's good. I keep scrolling down each time just to make sure that there's not any additional uh, rows down here that are being conflicted. Skyrim Storm Rain. Again, we've got the red row here showing us that the uh, the effects camera attached for the blowing fog needs to be dropped in. Do that. Grab the fog distance. Grab the data for the, the wind and the, the other information. Let's grab the thunder frequency for mine, the lightning color, the sounds. I sound like a broken record right now, but I'm just repeating this over and over just so it's very, very clear and obvious that this is kind of a quick thing to do. All right, this one's already good to go. Um, Sk Skyrim Overcast Rain. Go ahead and do the lighting color and the sounds. What's still conflicting here? That's fine. All right, now let's go double check. Let's look at Skyrim Overcast Rain. Okay, so I missed this one. Sometimes when you have multiple records selected, it shows the wrong one on the window here. So again, you're always gonna wanna double check if you see anything pink or red. Let's grab that data. Let's grab the sounds. Go back to the storm snow. All right, so this one's fine. It's turning red only because it's changing the supreme storms here. So let's double check this one. All right, so we're almost done actually. So we did all the weather changes. Now let's go ahead and if you remember within supreme storms and true storms, we had some conflicts between the shader particle geometry. So let's go ahead and take a look here. Currently in the load order, True Storms is the winning plugin because it's loading after Supreme Storms. So these changes are gonna be the ones that are added. But what if you wanted to keep all of my changes here, but you wanted uh, you know, the, maybe the velocity or the particle size from Supreme Storms? Well, just like we did with the weather, you can start by copying as an override into your master uh, master patch, click OK. And now you can go ahead and say, you know, I want the velocity of the snow to be 150, but I want the rest of the stuff to be the same as true storms. Now you've got your own patch with your customized settings and you didn't have to mess with any of those. Let's look at the rain particles. So um, Supreme Storms does not change the medium or the light particles, it only changes the rain storm particles. So once again, taking a look at this, let's say that you wanted some of these other Supreme Storms changes instead of mine. Um, we'll do the copy as override into, select the, the patch plugin that we made, click OK. So now we've got a clean area to work with. Uh, let's just go ahead and say rotation velocity 100. Now you might not know what these mean, and that doesn't matter, you typically don't need to. Um, you're probably not gonna get into this kind of detail. If you are, are, are comfortable with editing weather in this kind of detail, you probably don't need to be watching this video. Um, but I'm just, you know, kind of going into the guts to help you really understand how easy it is to combine values from one or two plugins into your own plugin. So at this point, we're done. So if we expand our plugin, just to double check and make sure everything's in there, our new plugin here, we've got our snow particles for the storm that we made our custom changes to. We've got our rainstorm particles that we made our custom changes to. And then if we go look through our weather, Again, I'm, I'm, if I right click and, and view, I'm, I'm hiding all of the rows that don't conflict just because there's too much info to, to read in, in one screen. Um, so yeah, if I go through and double check and look, I've got the Realistic Nights colors. I've got the sounds from True Storms and the, and the shader changes from True Storms. If I look at the overcast, or the, sorry, the storm rain here, I've got the 
blowing of fog effects and the fog distance effects from supreme storms and, and the wind speed and, and other information from supreme storms combined with dark nights and my true storm sounds. So if we hit control S to save, hit okay, drop this plugin toward the end of our load order or, or at the very least right after all of our weather plugins, you're done. And again, if you wanted to add more to this, all you would need to do is reload TES5 edit with the additional plugins that contain information in the weather or the shaders that you would like to copy and just continue to copy into this uh, master weather patch and pick and choose what information you, you, uh, you, you overwrite into this plugin just like we did with these other values. It's that simple and having control of it this way, you don't have to hesitate when you install or, or uh, try a new weather plugin um, or, you know, wait for the mod author to get back to you to make a patch or to verify whether or not something uh, is um, compatible or not. All you got to do is fire it up and try it out yourself. So hopefully this was uh, helpful to you. Um, let me know if you have any questions or, 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 you know, have any other specific types of things that you're looking for information on around this. Um, I'm on Reddit under fading signal and also on the Nexus under fading signal. And yeah, I guess I kept this under 15, well, not under, but I barely went over 15 minutes, which is great. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.